Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Heritage International Christian Church. Oh, I think you guys are ready to praise him. I think you're ready to worship him. Go on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Did you know that Jesus said if you would lift him up, he would draw people unto himself? So we have a job to do this morning. Amen. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad 
in this place. Can you just sense the presence of the Lord? He's just hovering over us. Wanting to tell you how much he loves you. Wanting to let you know that he is your champion. He came to the earth, what we just sang. He came from heaven, a heavenly place to come down to earth into a sinful place for you, for me. He fought the battle. People fought against him. 
they murdered him. They killed him for us, for what we did, not for what he did. He went to hell. He fought the battle that you don't have to fight. If you receive Jesus Christ, guess what? You skip over that. When you close your eyes for the last time, absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. You don't have to fight the enemy. In fact, you don't have to fight the enemy now because you have authority in the earth. And you can tell that devil, get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my body. Get your hands off my job. He fought the battle for you. It's almost like this. This is the picture that I see. You know, like a heavyweight champion, those big red gloves. This is us. We have them more like we fought. The Lord said, you can raise your hand like you're the hero in the story. He didn't mind fighting for you, and he doesn't mind fighting for you right now. You're the champion. Thank you for fighting all my battles, Lord. Lord, I don't have to fight. I can just rest. I can just have peace. Thank you, Lord. I waited so long. Waited so long, Jesus, and you did it, you did it, you did it for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. First verse. I tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it you take the broken thing and raise them to glory. See, you are my champion, and giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. And you crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place. I'm undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Jesus has conquered it all for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Next verse, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all sing this together. Now I can finally see it. Now I can finally see it. There you go. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving see. This is my victory. You are my champion. You are my champion. Oh, y'all go ahead. I need some of y'all in the choir. Come on. I am so away. You stand undefeated. Every battle you want. You Yes, you're seated in the head. 
I'm undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Oh, Come on, last time. I am seated. Here we go. I am seated in the heavenly bliss undefeated. Keep going. Tell, tell you to stop. With the one who has conquered it all. Come on. Let's just let that worship. Let it land on you right now. Let it land on you now. Oh, I'm so glad I'm seated in the heavenly place. Jesus made me undefeated because he was the one who conquered it all. He conquered it, it all for you. He conquered it, it all for you. Oh, let's come cry. I'm seated. I am seated in the heavenly I'm undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. You're a conqueror. You fought every battle for me. Say, I'm seated. I am seated in the heavenly I'm undefeated. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for the revelation. I pray that I, I want more revelation, and I pray that for every one of my friends, that you help us to, to understand more of who we are in you, what you've done for us, that we can be a part of changing the world together. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. Wow. 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 Let's thank God for the praise team and the band again. Boy. Boy, boy, boy. Let's prepare our hearts for our communion this morning. Romans chapter 6, let me just read that for you, verse 4. Paul writes, he says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Boy, that, that song was just so exciting uh, about who we are now in Christ, seated in heavenly places with the authority that Jesus has given us. And you know why he gave us authority? So that we could change the world. He gave us his authority so that we could change the world. I hope you're getting excited about communion this morning. Communion is a symbol that God has given to us to remind us of the union that we now have with God. When you eat something, when you eat food or drink drink, it gets in you and becomes part of you. And that's why God gave us the communion meal so that we would get the revelation. You know, sometimes we just have to get it over and over, hear it over and over. He, he, he gave it to us to remind us that we're not separate from God anymore. God is not far away. You don't have to try to bring God in or bring God down or bring God up. God dwells in the believer. When you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, 
When you believe that he's taken away your sins, when you believe that you and the Father are one, there's a growing confidence. There's a growing peace. There's a growing joy in you. So every time we partake of communion, he wants us to remind ourselves who we are to him. Has everyone been served? Jesus identified with us on the cross. We were dead in sin, and so he connected with us by going to the cross and becoming the sacrifice for our sins. We identify with him through baptism and communion. We identify with him through baptism and communion. So I want you to say this with me. Just, just, just like we were singing about it, let's just make a confession about it now. Here we go. Let's say this together. I live to do his will. I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How you doing? You doing all right? All right, all right? Let's keep going. I have the same relationship with the Father that Jesus has. As he is, so are we in this world. Good, good. I am part of the body of Christ. Jesus is the head and I'm part of his body. He took my sicknesses and gave me his healing. He took my pain and gave me his wholeness. He took my weakness and gave me his strength. He took my place on the cross so I could take his place on the earth. Jesus, live your life big through me. By the Holy Ghost. Everybody shout amen. 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 Jesus said this bread represents my body. And he says, unless you eat of my body, you have no part in me. Why? Because he wants to be, he wants to remind you that you are one with him. Religion is like, God, come do something. God, where are you? God, show up. No. But a relationship is, God and I are one. Let's commune together. At the end of the meal, Jesus took the cup and he said, this wine represents my blood that is shed for you. Without the shedding of the perfect blood, the sinless blood of Jesus, there could be no remission or, or forgiveness of sins. We could not sit in heavenly places. We could not call God our Father. We could not walk with God and hear his voice if it had not been for the blood. Let's commune together.
Amen. Hallelujah. Only thing you can say is, wow. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning power-packed worship service. Yeah, glory to God. Wow. We want to thank you all for joining us this morning. Also, we want to welcome all of our first-time visitors and all of our guests. You may be viewing service online for the first time or, or maybe you're in the sanctuary for the first time. We welcome each and every one of you. For those in the sanctuary, we're not going to ask you to say anything, but we sure would love to welcome you. With all of our first-time visitors and all of our guests, please stand and remain standing so that we may welcome you. Yes, right here. Yeah, right over here. Well, let's reach our hands out to them and let's say this together. Something good, Something good. is going to happen to you, happen to you. Before, you before you leave. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. God, loves God loves you. You are special. You are special. This is your day. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. I received that. Something good is going to happen to me. For all of our first-time visitors and guests, we have a free gift just for you. So when you leave the sanctuary through the double wooden doors, look to your left. You'll see the gathering place. Stop by and pick up your free gift. You may be in service and you might have a question. You might say, you know what? I want to learn more about loving God and loving others with God's love. In your worship guide, there's a connection card. Fill out the heading, and you can just check that. And then on your way out by the exit doors, there's two boxes, and you just drop your connection card in one of those two boxes. Wow, praise God. Or maybe you want information on becoming a member at Heritage. At the end of the service, someone from the foundations team will be right at the front of the sanctuary, and they'll give you information on membership. You can follow us on social media. Enjoy the rest of the worship service. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. I'm Marcus. And I'm Sky. So let's say I've been here for a couple of weeks, but I want to learn more about Heritage. How do I do that? Yeah, so to learn more about who we are as a church, to discover what it means to be part of a church family, Plus, to discover more ways you can get involved and to help get prepared for baptism, you can come out to the Foundations for Abundant Living class. It meets every Sunday at 10 a.m. in room 703. We'll be having our parenting seminar this Saturday at 10 a.m. The theme, Parenting with Purpose. You can still register by going to the table in the foyer or going online to the church website. Join us as we celebrate 29 years of ministry here at Heritage. We will be having our church anniversary dinner Sunday, May 19th. We will be having food, games, music, and the annual Ducks vs. Eagles basketball game. There's also going to be a cash prize giveaway. Now, the basketball game is for men only, ages 14 and up. You can stop by the table in the four-year after service and sign up today. But don't hesitate because space is limited. Today is the last day to register to get two entries in the cash prize drawing. So don't hesitate and register today. Hold on, hold on. We never mentioned this event is completely free. All you have to do is register. 
Stop by the table in the four-year after service today. We are going to be having the graduation for the 2024 class of Diva on Friday, April 26th. Come out and celebrate with all the ladies graduating from this amazing course. We will be having the Fellowship of Honorable Men Class of 2024 graduation next Sunday. We want everybody to come out and celebrate with all the men as they graduate. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning, Heritage. All right, well, I got an assignment for y'all. Clap one time if you can hear me. Oh, y'all did good. First service needs to count a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Count one time if you can hear me. Clap two times if you love the Lord. All right, I am Sister Camelia McKinney, and I stand before you today to tell you about the Heritage uh, Cookout. We have an annual Independence Day Cookout, and it's coming up this year on June the 29th. Amen? Yeah. Woo! This is our third year providing this cookout for Hardin County. Now, this year, we're calling it something special. You want to know what it's called? Yeah. It's the Freedom Fest Cook Community Cookout. <laughs> yes. Who know that when we're free in Christ, we are free indeed, right? Yeah. So listen, this is where I need you. I need your help. I need y'all to help me to spread the word. And let me tell you, the word itself says in Genesis 39 and 3, and his master saw the Lord was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. Amen? Amen. That's a word for each and every one of us because everything that we touch, the Lord prospers. So I need you to go out and help make this event successful and prosper. He going to help us prosper by going out to the community, letting the community know that God loves them, that he loves this nation. He loves each and every one of you. And we're going to go out there and make this happen, all right? All right, because this, this cookout is going to prosper beyond our, our own mind, our own dreams. So listen, let me tell you what's more important about this year. This year specifically, we are going to have a tent, and we are going to have a room set aside just for prayers for salvation. Just for prayer. Come on. That's right. I mean, wow. Can you imagine that you invited somebody to the cookout, and they gave their life right there to Jesus Christ on the spot? That's a testimony right there. Come on, God. Those are souls deposited into your heavenly account for you going out and doing the work of Jesus Christ. So we just praise God for that. He's going to tell you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I need for you guys to continue to stay in faith. I need you to pray with me as we get ready to go out. I need all y'all help <laughs> to go tell the community. This is going to be such a successful event. With all of your help, we're going to pray for saving souls and winning souls to Jesus Christ. We will give you more information so you can come help me and my team on May the 5th, all right? God bless and enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning. My name is Nareth, and I'm going to be leading us into the Confession of Faith this morning. Um, every week, it's important that we remind ourselves um, who we are, so you can find the confession of faith on the back of your bulletin or on the screens. Heritage, who are we? Heritage is a movement of the gospel, bringing spiritual, mental, physical, social, and economic renewal in our communities and the world through faith in God's word and through supernatural disciple making. People are standing in line to get in this church. Healings, miracles, signs, and wonders flow in our midst continuously, and there is standing room only in every service. All of our property is paid off in full, and we owe nothing to anyone. We are a multi-ethnic, multi-generational church family of imperfect people, all coming under the loving lordship of Jesus Christ and learning how to love God love each other, and love the world with God's love. Every need in this ministry is met, and we are 100% Thai givers. We are prosperous, healthy, and protected by the power of God. Jesus Christ is our King, and this is a productive year for us. We shall succeed at everything in Christ. The doors of failures have been shut, and we shall not know defeat. We are helping people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference because we believe that love will save the world.
morning, everybody. Everybody looks so wonderful. How many of you know even when you're looking wonderful, there could be things going on in your life that you need the Lord to turn it around for you? How many can say, I need, I need something, something needs to be turned around in my life. It might be a family member. It might be your finances. You may need a new job, a new car. So this song works sort of like a prayer. It's called, God, Turn It Around. So in the song, we're going to be singing it, and we're going to get to a point where I know that you're going to sense the answer. The answer's coming. Because you know the Lord always has an answer for you. Amen. thing around God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around I'm calling on the name that changes everything God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I'm praying God come. That's why sing it with us. And turn this thing around. God turn it around. God turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. Say, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. All of my hope. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something. Right now, he is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something. Right now, he is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something. Right now, he is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. Right now, He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Right now, He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Right now, He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Oh! 
I turn it around. Just like a prayer, come on. God turn it around. I turn it around. I turn it around. I turn it around. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. Say, God turn it around. Turn around my husband, Lord. Turn around my wife, Lord. Turn around my children, Lord. God turn it around. Turn around my job, Lord. Turn around my boss, Lord. Turn around my sickness, Lord. God turn it. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it. God turn it around. Woo! Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. Thank you, Lord. God turn it. Did you know things move when you speak in the earth? God, thank you, Lord, for turning it around. God, turn it around. Thank you, Jesus. Say, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Oh, He's turning it around. Yeah, yeah. One more time. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know y'all. We're in some. God, turn it around for me right now. Turn it around for me right now. Turn it around. Yeah. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Not a lot of. God, turn it. to the Lord. We love you, God. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for the answer. We thank you, Lord God, for turning it around. We love you, oh God. Yeah. One more time. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Come on, nice and slow. Here's the answer. God, turn it around. Thank you for turning it. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many people God ministered to you just now in that song? Wow, thank you, God. Let's just pray. Father, we just seal that so that it's not just an emotional thing while we're here, but we take it, we embrace the turnaround. We hold on to the turnaround. No matter what we see when we go home, no matter what we see tomorrow or the day after, we hold on. We embrace the word of God that you're turning it around for us in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Well, it's good to have everybody in church this morning. Wow. It's good to have you with us watching online. God bless you. 
We're, we're glad that you're part of the Heritage family, the online Heritage family. Well, if you have your Bibles here in the house, let's hold them up and let's say this together. Are you ready? This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to be taught the Word of God. And I boldly declare my mind is open, my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living seed of the Word of God. And I will never be the same. Never, 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 never. Ever, 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 ever. Amen. You sound like you're ready for the word. We're going to open with two scriptures this, this morning. We're going to start, let's look at uh, Acts chapter 15 and then Psalm 66. So Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 16. Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 16. And then Psalm 66, starting at verse 1. Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 16. Would you stand with us for the reading of the word this morning? Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 16. Here's where it reads in the New King James Version. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Now, Psalm 66 Starting at verse 1. Psalm 66, starting at verse 1. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. I believe that's going to be our title for the message today. Make his praise glorious. You, you may be seated. Now, we started uh, in Easter with this theme, uh, rebuild, rebuild the world. And the thought is that Easter gives us power. God gives us power through what he did in Jesus to overcome everything that's wrong in our world. You may be used to thinking about Christianity as, as your ticket to heaven. And that's good because we don't want to go to hell. And I don't want you to go to hell. And Jesus did die on the cross to pay for our sins so that no human being has to go to hell. That's good news. But that's just part of the news. The other part of the good news is that Jesus died on the cross so that hell doesn't have to stay on earth. You don't have to go through hell. You don't have to live in hell. And you don't have to expect hell. Jesus rose from the dead to defeat hell. In the future... And in the now. So we've been talking about how God has, when Jesus rose from the dead, he empowered humanity to overcome evil. That's the gospel. The good news. So today, 
we want to talk about, well, let me read a couple of scriptures from the past that we read. Uh, let me read for you. You don't have to turn there because you got it from last, last couple of weeks. Uh, and you can go back. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it on the videos. But Ezekiel 36, 33, here's what it said. Thus says the Lord God, on the day that I cleanse you from your iniquities, I will also, everybody say also. also. Watch this. He says, I will also, not only will I cleanse you from your iniquities so you can go to heaven, but I will also enable you to dwell in the cities and the ruins shall be rebuilt. See, there's more to the gospel than just going to heaven. Yes, we get to go to heaven, but while you're here, you got to rebuild some things. Because the devil has torn up some things. Maybe, maybe it's been generations torn up in your life. Maybe your, your, grandparents, your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents every time had to start over again and start over again and start over again because the devil keeps tearing up stuff in your family. Well, this is your time to start rebuilding some stuff. The resurrection of Jesus means it's time to start rebuilding. So that, that scripture says, on the day that I cleanse you, this is Ezekiel 36, 33, on the day that, this is God speaking, the day that I cleanse you, God says, from all your iniquities, that's what Jesus did on the cross. He says, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities, Chicago, Louisville, whatever city that the devil's been tearing down, he says, and the ruins shall be rebuilt. Are you up for it? Then verse 35 says, so they shall say, this land that was desolate, this country that was torn apart, this nation that was ripped in pieces, the land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. And the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities, Los Angeles, Chicago, Louisville, are now fortified and inhabited. Are you up for it? Then last week, last week we read the scripture, Isaiah 61. I'm going to read that one for you also. That's rather long, so just kind of try to stay awake. Isaiah 61, starting at verse 1, here's where it reads. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, verse 4, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Do you see the theme in the prophetic word that God was speaking about when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead? It's not just so that we get to go to heaven. Yay, we get to go to heaven, but it's also so that we can defeat evil and rebuild what the devil has torn down in our, in our world. Then today, the scripture we wanted to start with is Acts 15, starting at verse 16. After this, God says, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. Here he goes again. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord. Let, let me give you the big idea for today. 
big idea. This is, this is the idea today. With my praise and worship, I enter God's presence to see and hear what he's doing. The tabernacle of David was unique. There was the tabernacle of Moses that God showed Moses how to put it together and what was to be a part of it. There was the temple of Solomon that God had, had empowered David to give Solomon all of the resources and, and they built the, the temple of Solomon. But this tabernacle of David was unique in that incorporated a large amount of praise. David actually created instruments to praise God with. The Bible calls David, God actually called David a man after his own heart. There was something about the relationship that David had with God that whenever something came up, God just always seemed to be right there for David. Even when it came to this giant, you know, the giant Goliath that, that everybody else was so afraid of and, and everybody else was hiding from, David shows up on the scene. And we don't, as I'm reading that, I didn't see where David actually prayed and said, God, you got to help me with this. God, he, he didn't even call on God. He just assumed that anything that was against God couldn't stand against him. Because God was with him. Somebody say, God, turn it around. See, when you realize who you are to God and why you're here, you start to have a heart like David, where, where it's like, if, if, this, if this is against God, then it can't stand against me. Because God is with me. What well, David how did he get a relationship, relationship like that? The Bible said he played the harp, he, play, he played instruments, he sang. And if you read through the Psalms, you see all the different songs and things that David was worshiping God with. David worshiped God when it was good. David worshiped God when it was bad. David worshiped God when he was, when he was living righteous. And David even worshiped God when he was wrong. Come on now. And God stayed with him no matter what he was, even when he was messed up, God defended him. God stayed with him. God protected him. God raised him. Don't you want a relationship like that? See, see, a lot of times we, we as Christians, we get caught up in our own righteousness. And we think that God is with us because we're good. And as long as we're good enough, God will be with us. Come on, don't y'all look at me like that. That is kind of, it's easy to get into that mentality because we try to do right, we try to do good, and then pretty soon we start thinking, okay, God's with me because I'm good. But praise is not based on my goodness. I praise God because of his goodness, that he's faithful, that he stays with me, and that takes the focus off of me and puts it on to God. And as long as I praise God, I start to see God move on my behalf. So, so let me read for you the big idea again. With my praise and worship, I enter into God's presence to see and hear what God is doing. Now you have to understand, I'm sure you're aware of this, that God is everywhere. God, I mean, God is everywhere. I mean, it's not like, though, you just run into him because you can't tell he's there. Most people never perceive the presence of God. Let's think of it this way. Most people think that God is out there in heaven. But try, try to think of it this way. Think of heaven as another dimension right here. I mean, I'm not saying it is. I'm just trying to help us think about it a certain way. So, so think of it like heaven is just another dimension right here that I can't perceive. You have your five senses to perceive what's going on. If you, if you couldn't see, there, there are some things you couldn't perceive, you couldn't smell. Your senses are given to you to perceive 
what's going on around you. But then your spirit is given to you. You are a spirit man to begin to perceive, to be able to perceive the other dimension, the God dimension. You connect with God through your spirit. That's when you get born again, when you become a new creature, your spirit comes alive to God. And then God is real to you because you can perceive him. But many people walk through life and God is all around them. God is in the trees. God is in the air. God is all. God is in the pets. God is all around them. But they never know it because they can't perceive him because they're spiritually, spiritually dead. Then a lot of people become Christians, spiritually alive, but they don't know how to perceive God. So a Christian, you can just be religious and just be doing, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I know I'm good. And then suddenly you mess up. Where is God? Because you can't perceive God. Because you think God is there because you're good. But with your praise and your worship, you enter in to the presence of God. Even when you mess up. That's what the blood is for. Oh my goodness. Y'all going to make me run up in here. Listen. When I think about the goodness of Jesus. Listen, listen. The blood of Jesus was shed once. It's, it's not the blood of a goat. or Not the blood of a lamb. Not the blood of a cow. This is the blood of a man. A perfect sinless man that died in my place. So that even now when I mess up, God still says, hey, come boldly. Come boldly. Come boldly before my presence. Come boldly into the throne to find help. Somebody say help. Whenever you need help, come boldly. You don't have to crawl, oh God. I know, I know, I know I, I, know I messed up, God. Oh, God. No. You can come singing. Because you're not singing about your own goodness. You're singing about the goodness of God. You're singing about the mercy of God. You're singing about the grace of God. You can sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. I'm coming to you. That saved a wretch like me. Here I am again, God, with my own wretched self. And you can come right into his presence just like you belong there because you belong there because of the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! With all your mistakes, with all your weaknesses. Shoot. Shoot. Some must say turn it around. That's why God, God wants to use you. He wants to show you. Listen, the Bible, this is so good. The Bible says that in the ages to come, God wants to show the creation his kindness, his mercy and his kindness toward you. That any time you come, he's there for you. He's there for you. So your praise is important. Now, when I was growing up, I grew up in Kimball, West Virginia. And I, I grew up in the Baptist church. I went to the first Baptist church of Kimball, West Virginia. My pastor was Reverend T.D.A. Winston. He was a kind of a self-taught guy. He was a coal miner. And he got some books and taught himself. He was a very strong very, uh, very studious and very spiritual man. Our church was a very proper church, but we had some folks in our church that they would get happy. <laughs> they would be praising God, and, and they would get excited, and, and some of them would start crying, and, and some of them would start shouting, and as a little kid, as a little kid, 
they were the people who were praising God and they were passionate about God and they were excited about God and they were crying. They were the ones that kept me interested in God. You know what I mean? When I, when I saw somebody that was uh, excited about God, I wanted I want to know this kind of God. What, what is, who is God? What is God? Because them folks, you, they, they, be singing, they be singing them songs. I had a song written down. Wait a minute. Let me see what that song was again. What was the song? Do y'all remember what it was? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, here it goes. No, they, they, they were good. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our struggles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now listen, listen, listen. There's, there was a guy named Mr. Clay. Mr. Clay could not read. He was a farmer, but he could not read. But he sang that bass line. Answer by him. He sang that part. And I mean, he'd just, he just be crying, and he'd be so in love with God because of what God had done for him and his wife and his family. And I'm just a little kid, and I'm like, oh, wow. I wanted to know the God that Mr. Clay knew. And so I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to turn up your passion for God. To turn up your praise. To make you a little bit more excited. I know some of y'all can't stand it already, but listen, listen. Turn it up. Somebody say turn it up. Because when people come in and they come to church, when people come to church, they're looking for something that's real. And you know, you know, you know something's real when people are excited about it. You know your team is a winning team when, when everybody's excited about the team. Who was that? Okay, okay. So, so listen, listen. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you turn up your praise. Come on, you got it? Psalm 60, uh, well, let's go back to it. To 66. Psalm 66, 1 says, make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Hallelujah. Yeah, make his praise glorious. God is restoring Rebuilding, reshaping the earth. Now, the devil has destroyed so much in our world. And that's what we've been talking about, that when Jesus rose from the dead, he gave us a new life, a second chance, and power to make a difference in the world. Now, a lot of people want to make a difference in the world. A lot of people want to see things better. They just don't have necessarily God's idea of what better is. And you have to understand there are only two sides. There's God's side and there's the devil's side. And on the devil's side, he has a whole lot of different names, a whole lot of different uh, titles, and a whole lot of different ideas about what makes things better. On God's side, he's got the Bible to help us know what better looks like. Now, every one of us, wherever you work or wherever you live, is a part of making the world better. Some of you are passionate about one cause, and some of you are passionate about another cause. Like, for instance, hunger. Some of you may be passionate about ending hunger. Some of you may be passionate about ending c colonialism. Some of you may be passionate about ending uh, racism. Some of you may be passionate about ending sicknesses and diseases like cancer. But all of it is under the one plan 
of God to change the world. Because sickness and disease, racism and colonialism, segregation and hatred, divorce and pornography, all, everybody say all, all. came into the world through sin. So every problem that we face is a problem of sin. So we have to, each one of us, whatever, whatever uh, level or wherever we're working, whatever the, um, we're working on, whatever our area is, whether it's hunger or racism or sickness or divorce or whatever your area is, maybe you're a lawyer, maybe you're a doctor, maybe you're a nurse, maybe you're a postal worker, whatever it is, we've all got to have one Lord. We've all got to be bringing one kingdom. We've all got to be following one book. Without that, if you're not under the book, under the Lord, in the kingdom, you're on the other side. And it's very easy for Christians to go after causes and end up on the other side and not even know it. And that's why your praise is so important. Your praise keeps you focused on the king. See, you, you, the more you praise him, the more you come into his presence and he can show you things. You know, if you're an engineer, he can show you engineering stuff because he's the great engineer. If you're in medicine, he can show you medical stuff because he's the great physician. If you're in law, he can show you law stuff because he's the great lawyer. Everything that you need to know, whatever your area is, when you get under the king of kings, he begins to pour into you what he wants in that world so that the world can be rebuilt. But you got to make up your mind to go into his presence. You got to get in his presence. You got to want to hear from him. Otherwise, you'll be doing what everybody else is doing just doing the devil's work for the devil. Your praise, your, your praise is, is so important. The Bible says in Psalm 72, let me just read this for you. The blessing, the blessed and blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Psalm 98 verse 4 says, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth, break forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. Psalm 150 verse 6 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Whoa, glory to God. Can you, can you see the world getting better? I, I know you can't see it with your eyes out. When you look out, I, I know it looks bad. I know the economy looks bad. I know the politics look bad. I know the wars look bad. And, and qu quite frankly, can I just tell you, there's, there's a good chance that we're going to go through some things. But now it's important that you get your faith on the inside of you so that you see a rebuilding. So that you see the kingdom of God and that you're part of something that so that you it's, that it's not hopeless. It, it's not it's, it, it may look bad, but listen, the kingdom of God is still in you. And if you're the last man standing, the kingdom of God is still in you. And you can spread what's in you to others and it can still rebuild. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. This is going to surprise some of you. Mankind will never destroy the earth. The Bible says the earth has been established by God to destroy, to, to inhabit. That no man, no weapon that, ma that man has made is big enough to destroy what God created. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it. I'm going to tell you, no one's going to surprise you. It's, it's kind of scary for me. Man will never create life. Never do it. You may duplicate life. You may mimic life. You may have artificial life. But you will never create life. That's why we praise him and not ourselves. We are his 
sheep. Go to Psalm 100. Real quickly, we'll close with this. Psalm 100. Verse 4. Here's how we come into his presence. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. So anytime, in any situation, you can become aware of God's presence by just singing, just worshiping. Just praising him. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, let's do that one more time. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Such a special way, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Now here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to go home and get in your closet, your prayer place, wherever, wherever you can be alone with God because God is going to be right there. And I want to encourage you to praise him. Nobody else around you, nobody looking at you, nobody wondering what are you doing. You just praise him and ask the Holy Spirit to help you praise God until you can sense his presence right there. Ask the Holy Ghost. I, I promise you that if you ask him, and if you'll begin to praise him, you'll begin to sense the presence of God. Now, let me tell you, I told you I grew up in First Baptist Church of Kimball, West Virginia. Listen, most of us in the church didn't feel nothing. And most of, most of my growing up years, I didn't feel nothing. You know, God, I could have run into God like running into the podium. I would never feel, I didn't feel nothing. But I kept on praising him. And I kept on asking the Holy Spirit to make him more real to me. And now, I, man, sometimes I just sit there and just cry like Pastor Janie. Because the power of God, I can perceive his presence. I can sense his love. And every one of you needs that. Every one of you needs to perceive his presence with you and sense his love for you. And you just get in your closet with, by yourself. And just ask the Holy Ghost to help you praise him until you sense his presence with you. I promise it will change your life. Let's bow our hearts together. Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for protection against what's coming in the world. I thank you for prospering us. When everything else is going down, you're going to find a way for your people to go up. Jesus, thank you for making this relationship with God possible. Now, those of you who are here this morning, if you're not sure that you're saved, if, you, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you today. And before you leave here, you can be on the road of this journey with God, this adventure 
of hearing his voice and following, following Jesus. Or maybe you're here today and you, you grew up in church like I did, but you're not as close to God as you used to be. But you sense you want to come close now. You recognize that the world is crazy and you need to get under the covering. You need to get under the wings of Almighty God. I want to pray for you. Or maybe you're here today and you say, I just, I don't know about all that stuff you talked about today. I just know that I, I came because I need God. Or maybe you're here, you don't even know why you came, but you sense the Holy Ghost drawing you to God. I want to pray for you all over the building. If, you, if, if you're any one of those things, and if you want to get prayer, just, just raise your hand right where you are. That's me. That's me. That's me. Would you pray for me? That's me. Would you pray? Yes, right here. Yes, you can put it down. I'm going to ask you to raise it again in just a moment. Anyone else? I grew up in church. I'm not as close to God as I used to be. I want to come closer to God now. Or I'm giving my life to Jesus. I want to start a relationship with God now. Or I've drifted away. I'm not as close to God. I recognize the world is crazy, and I want to get under the wings of God. If that's you, just raise your hand. We're going to pray. This is your day. This is your day. Okay. Good. The young lady that raised her hand way back there in the back. Can you walk to me? Come on. You see two more? Come on. Right here. Okay. And any others right here? Okay. I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray with this young lady right here. Let's go back this way. I'm going to pray with you also. Anybody else? So, Father, I just thank you now. For their prayer, their heart is wide open for what you're going to do in their lives. I'm just hearing this word. It's never too late with God. God is always, there's the presence of God somewhere. The spirit of God is moving. It is never too late with God. All over the place now. The move of God is touching you. Now, I want you to just pray this out loud with me. Just pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I recognize today it's because of my sins that I deserve to go to hell forever. But you love me so much that you came to the earth and you went to the cross died for me. On the third day you rose from the dead so that I could be born again so that I could be forgiven so I could do a part in making the world better. I believe you're alive and I ask you to be Lord of my life. I've decided to follow Jesus. That's right. The Holy Ghost is all over you guys. He's all over you. Say it again. I've decided to follow Jesus. Help me to know what that means in the days ahead. I believe. I'm saved. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all got some tissues here? Boy, the Holy Ghost is all over you guys. Who can come and just share with them how to get, James, are you here? Who am I looking for? One of the ladies. Y'all got them? Okay. So they're right back there in the back. Just, just minister to them. Are we baptizing today? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Listen, if you get a chance to come over and, and just be with the folks who are being baptized today, that would be such a blessing to them. Uh, last time we baptized... 13, 13, 
and this time we're scheduled for nine. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. You guys are doing such a great job. Leroy, would you come? So at this time, all those that are getting baptized today, we're going to go ahead and release you at this time so you can go ahead and get prepared. So those that are being baptized this morning, you are free to leave so you can go ahead and prepare to be baptized. Amen. Glory to God. So are you ready to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords today with your tithes and offerings? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. There are several ways that you can give today. If you like, you can text your giving to Heritage KY to the number that you see on the screen, or you may want to go on the church website, give on the church website. Those that are watching this online, if you would like to mail your giving in, please mail it to the address that you see on the screen. So no matter how you give this morning, God sees and he will bless. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, all that we have comes from you. And all that we have, you have liberated. Now, Father, as your people bring their tithes and offerings and their gifts of love, Father, we say that they have been set free. Their finances have been liberated by you. Now, Father, I speak supernatural debt cancellation over their lives today. And if you receive it, say amen. amen. You may come forth and give. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm announcements. First off, the cafe wanted me to let you guys know they have a buy one, get one free. So once we dismiss, stop by the cafe. Also, all Fellowship of Honorable Men, if you've graduated, you have your sword, we'd love for you to participate in the ceremony next Sunday. This is what I need you to do. Come to our rehearsal this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock. We'll be here in the sanctuary. So FHM, Fellowship of Vulnerable Men Alumni, we'd love you to be a part of our ceremony. Bring your sword and come to rehearsal next Thursday at 7 p.m. so that we can get you squared away. First time visitors and guests, we wanna thank you for worshiping with us. We have a free gift for you when you exit out these doors. Look to your left, you'll see the gathering place. In the gathering place, you'll receive your free gift. Also, if you're here and you have a testimony, God did something for you here in the service, we'd love to hear about it. We have a testimony ministry in the gathering place, and they will capture your testimony, and we'll just get to share about, hey, 
God is moving here in the services. We'd love to hear it. If you'd like to join the church family, come down front and see the foundations team. They'll get you connected. Also, in your worship guide, you had the connection card. If you filled out that connection card, make sure to drop it off in one of the boxes in the back. Let's all stand together. Now remember these words from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse, where we walk by faith and not by sight. We're dismissed. <laughs>